Welcome back to Destination Duna, the series in which I attempt to satisfy the Duna Permanent Outpost Mission Architecture Challenge issued by Sturmsteiger and the KSP Forums. I'm your host, Three Martini Launch, and this is Episode 8. I'm actually in a uh, rather good mood this evening. Um, I remember last time I indicated that it would be unlikely I would have any Kerbals uh, on the uh, on Duna by, uh, by Day 1000, the end of the challenge. So it turns out it's actually... Uh, I've got... Four launches before the next uh, um, ejection window to uh, Duna, and I think uh, I could actually have Kerbals there and uh, have my infrastructure basically all but set up uh, that I don't need any more heavy launches. I think I'll need uh, one or two for uh, uh, supplies, and, uh, and then other other than that, uh, supplies are going to be the only thing uh, only thing uh, necessary. Anyways, I want to get a launch uh, on the uh, launch pad. Just so I can start the timer, we've actually got a uh, Duna ejection coming up in uh, six days or seven days. But I want to get something on the launch pad so I can start the uh, start the alarm clock. And I think I'm going to go... I've got another uh, pusher. The uh, pushing vehicle I have in uh, the uh, Duna sphere of influence uh, has the uh, small uh, Clampatron docking port on it. Everything else um, has the Clampatron uh, Senior. Uh, docking ports. Uh, oops. So uh, I wanted to get something that was uh, that was more compatible with uh, with what's going on. Now we can push the uh, uh, the fuel modules back and forth because they've got that regular clampatron there that the uh, Quadrupus uses to uh, lower them down on the planet. Uh, but they can't push anything else. Uh, everything else has been standardized on the uh, clampatron senior. So I think I'm going to retire uh, retire that pusher that's in. Um, um, Ike orbit right now in the Duna system and uh, replace it. Uh, well, this one is going to go into duty here in um, um, Kerbin uh, space, and I'll send the other, uh, the, you know, the lightweight pusher, the one that only has one atomic engine. And I'm coming in plenty low. Uh, again, I'm getting a little sloppy probably, uh, but uh, that's the way it's going to go. Now, I'm not going to put a, a decoupler here because I've had bad experiences with decouplers this close to uh, engines. I'm going to go ahead and put another. Uh, uh, Clampatron Senior on there, and then go ahead and uh, put my uh, trusty Pony 25. Is that gonna? Yeah, I think I'm gonna leave the pro brain on this time. I don't want any uh, clipping going on. That should uh, that should be okay. So, uh, anyways, uh, you know, features of this puppy, uh, you'll notice, uh, you know, two engines instead of one, it's got a little bit more, uh, RCS. Yeah, that's really about it. So let's get it, on. <laughs> let's get it, uh, onto the, uh, onto the launch pad and, uh, get onto the, uh, whoop, whoop, exciting stuff of the day. So let's see, I'll put a, uh. Come on, put some launch shot. Uh, there we go. Launch stabilizers on that. Oh yeah, I can't have this. And uh, that's looking uh, pretty launchable. So we'll get that on the launch pad and I'll uh, see you in just a moment. And I don't actually go to the launch pad. I go here to check out the uh, pusher that I'm launching to Duna. I was afraid I was going to have to go back to Minmus and pick up more fuel, but with 3000 Delta V, that's uh, plenty. So I go ahead and set up a Kerbal alarm clock, and the next thing coming up looks like it's the Trek by 6. That's right, I've got three ships actually uh, ejecting for Duna. We're going to start with the Trek by 6. And I'll go ahead and set up my uh, maneuver node. It's usually right around uh, four or five o'clock on the uh, on the um, dark side of um, of uh, Kerbin. You know, counting um, the the prograde direction of uh, Kerbin as uh, as twelve o'clock. And I probably should actually pull this one back just a little bit. You see, as I get closer, the uh, ejection angles a little bit. Yeah, you, know, you can't see it very well. Anyways, uh, <laughs> changing focus to uh, Duna. I love having that conic set to zero on uh, Maneuver Note. 
um, it shows me exactly what my counter is going to look like. That was uh, you know, a few million meters out, but it's good enough for here. I can adjust that uh, after I get out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. I usually adjust a little bit more. And then uh, somewhere you know, between a third of the way and two thirds of the way there, I'll adjust for um, inclination. And uh, um, at the same time, I can uh, go ahead and narrow it down a little further, uh, typically get it down within 100,000 uh, meters or a couple of hundred thousand meters, and then do the rest when, uh, uh, as soon as I switch into uh, do this, uh, Sphere of Influence, uh, get it down for uh, arrow breaking. Anyways, I uh, checked, <laughs> I started up to check that maneuver, it's 12 minutes, holy moly. Uh, but I forgot I'd uh, shut off all, uh, all but two of those uh, engines for uh, docking, uh, for, uh, not for docking, but for rendezvous. Went ahead and turned them on, I've got a very reasonable, uh, uh, reasonable burn there of four minutes. And this is pretty funny, the uh, truck by six, which has got the, you know, 50% more thrust is moving the light package, the truck by four, you know, the, the lighter of the two has got the big, huge package you'll see in just a, a couple of minutes. Anyways, there I am, burning for um, do not ejection. Um, onto that little pusher. Again, you can see it's got almost uh, 3,000 meters per second of delta V. That's uh, going to be plenty. At least I hope it's going to be plenty to get it to uh, uh, do not. Do is typically uh, between 1050 and 1100 uh, for the ejection, uh, meters per second for the ejection. Um, uh, there's going to be a little bit of adjustment on the way, uh, you know, 100 meters per second, maybe, if that, uh, probably much, much less. Um, and then for, an, you know, insertion, for injection, uh, you've got uh, um, arrow braking, uh, so uh, you don't really need anything. <coughs> yeah, you'll need a little to uh, circularize, uh, circularize the orbit uh, back up. Anyway, set up another encounter, get that burn going, and let's take a look at the big dog. <laughs> And I was going to go from left to right and show everything, but uh, sped up four times. <laughs> it's just going too fast. I'll try to get it all in when we get a longer shot <laughs> of the ship. Uh, but uh, this is uh, pretty good. You should see when I try to turn this uh, puppy around. I'm going to go ahead and again, and I might have set up a much better encounter with this one. Now, this uh, ship arrives uh, like 30 days before the other ships. I forgot exactly what it was, but it's, uh, it's an incredible amount of time. Uh, the other ships wind up going a little bit outside of uh, Duna's orbit and then coming back and uh, intercepting. Uh, this one uh, goes straight there. Got a, like a perfect uh, perfect intercept. And you can see got a five minute burn. Not too bad, but it's going to be burning all those engines, not just the four um, LVNs at the back. It's got uh, another eight um, um, LV909s that are going to be burning as well. Here I'm turning around. This is four times uh, sped up, uh, you know, four times acceleration on the speed. So you get a major reason I don't mind using MechJet. Just click on the node and it just takes oh, it took so much time. Anyway, starting at the front of the ship, which is now on the left, I've got the uh, space station for Duna. Uh, and moving to the right, the uh, space station for Ike. Then I've got the Octopus 2 and the Keithane Miner for uh, for Ike. Uh, below that we've got those two fuel tanks. Those are, I don't know, half or three quarters full of fuel right now. And then of course the uh, Truck by 4, which I think is completely full. So we've got plenty of fuel. You see about 5,000 Delta V, more than enough to get there. So, uh, speeding it around to meet up with that um, maneuver node. And it turns out I needed to point that just a tiny little fraction of a couple of degrees in a hurry, so I had to turn on RCS to do that. Anyways, I uh, start the burn, and again, you can see I've got all uh, 12 engines uh, firing. Uh, but still, that's pretty impressive, getting all that, uh, like getting, you know, 1,100 meters per second in uh, five minutes for, I don't know how many tons that is. Uh, I don't have the vehicle information up, but I mean, it's, it's got to be huge. And I'm not sure why I lingered so long on this. Maybe I thought I was going to tell you about the stuff here. But uh, you can see it, the uh, space stations at the left, the uh, quadrupus, and the miner, and the fuel tanks, and the pusher, the truck by four. So let's see, did I have anything else going on? Oh, yeah, I have the launch. I'm going to launch that uh, pusher. And whoa, getting dizzy there. And again, just uh, letting uh, Kerbal Longcock uh, take me up to the uh, launch date. And I'm going to be docking at uh, Gia. That's where those uh, fuel modules are. And I want to take those back to uh, Minmus. And I think I waited a little bit too long. I think I'll be behind it uh, when I come up uh, on the uh, on the orbit. Uh, but I, I'm close by. And again, it's pretty easy to uh, to rendezvous if you're on uh, 
uh, you know, 15 degrees of uh, of arc on the uh, on the orbit. Um, Maybe again, for some reason, I lingered uh, lingered quite a bit on this launch as well. I'm not really sure why, but I'll be switching over to orbital view any second now. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah, talking with words and saying stuff. And okay, here we go. We got the encounter uh, coming up. And uh, normally I wouldn't have show, shown this, but I you know, had a problem. I, I don't have. Prograde and retrograde marker, the you know, pointed to the target and away from the target, it's all gone. I, I don't know what happened to it. Um, I can do most of it, but I mean, I rely on that stuff to uh, to dock. I wound up by restarting the game and it all came back. Um, eventually got the stuff to a Minmus that you can see here. Uh, went into dock, there I am, uh, just uh, orienting uh, Saline Station. And then taking those fuel tanks in uh, slowly but surely. Come on. And uh, did it get dark? No, and I'm on the uh, yeah, looking just at the dark side of stuff. And again, not sure why I lingered on here so long, but uh, yeah, well, uh, while I'm here, I'll give you my my docking secrets. Um, obviously, that red thing is, uh, you know, the pink circle is where you want to be pointing. You guys obviously set up the uh, docking port that you're going to as uh, the target. Set up the docking port on your ship that you're, you know, that you're going to be using as uh, control from here. Um, and again, I use mech jab, so I can use that minus parallel thing. It points me the right direction. And then you line up the pink thingy and the red thingy, going about 2.2 meters per second. And you don't have to have those lined up with the orange, you know, the direction you're pointing. Uh, they have to be pretty close. That's uh, close enough for a ship like this. For the uh, for the quadrupus, I'd want it to be a little closer because it's got stuff sticking out the front. But for a ship like this with nothing on the front, nothing to run into, that's uh, that's a fine angle. And uh, you just line those up. You use the uh, caps lock uh, command to get the uh, fine uh, tuning, and uh, you can just uh, zip right in there. Anyways, I wind up taking one of those fuel modules down to uh, Minmus in the mining operation. You can see there I've got the uh, miner all full. I've got the quadrupus and its attached fuel module full. Full, pardon me. And we're going to go ahead and uh, launch back up and dock with Saline Station. I wonder if I should change the name of that station now that it's no longer in the moon and it's on Minmus. Anyways. Um, also, when you're on an airless body, you can switch over to 45 degrees or more much, much sooner than you would, uh, say, uh, go on to Kerbin. The only reason you take off straight off on, uh, or Kerbin, rather, the only reason you take off straight off on Kerbin is to get through the thick part of the atmosphere, then tip over. On uh, airless worlds, you can tip over right much further. I mean, you got to worry about, you know, running into mountains, but uh, other than that, uh, there's no atmosphere, so uh, the sooner you get, uh, do your gravity turn, uh, the better off you're going to be. And uh, once again, you see lining up, well, this is uh, lining up the yellow and the red just for uh, getting an intercept. And it gets dark just before the uh, dock, so I don't show it. It's uh, dock maneuvers in the dark are pretty uh, pretty boring. So we can take a look at this dock maneuver. Anyways, uh, that's about going to do it for this episode. Uh, next episode, I think I'll have everybody uh, coming into uh, Duna's uh, Sphere of Influence. Um, I hope you tune in to see that one. And uh, ooh, wait, wait, wait. okay, get on there, get on there. Anyways, I wind up having to do this again. I think I do it a couple of more times before uh, before the next ones. Anyways, uh, that's going to do it for me. Um, if you like the video, like the video and leave a comment. If you don't like it, like the video and leave a comment. Comment. This is Three Martini Launch, and I am out of here. <laughs>